Good afternoon, Grade 12s. Today we are going to discuss inventory as well as on the 20th in our next session. So that includes um, inventory systems, inventory valuation, as well as some ratios with regards to, to inventory. Before we start though, and before we start doing the activities that you have in front of you in your, in your workbook, I would like us to, to look at some examples, just to set the background for, for those activities. Okay, so if we go to our PowerPoint, um, let's look at that. Inventory systems, valuation, and analysis. The first thing we need to look at is for inventory systems, there are two systems. The periodic system that you did in grade 11, and then the perpetual inventory system, that is the one that you did in, in grade 10. Then we need to look at inventory valuation. There we also have two methods. Now inventory valuation is how you calculate the value of your stock. There we've got the FIFO method, first in first out method, and we've got the weighted average method, those two. So we've got two inventory systems and two different ways to evaluate our stock. And then lastly, we're going to look at different ratios for stock analysis. And there we've also got two, the rate of stock turnover, as well as the, the stock holding period. In other words, how many months or days stock we have at hand. Okay, so let's first look at inventory systems, because that's, that's the basics the, that you need to know before you can, can do all these activities. So the inventory systems, we have the two the perpetual system. Now there, you must always determine the cost price of the stock sold when you're using the perpetual system. You must determine the cost price. Whenever sales take place, you determine the cost price. The, per the periodic is different though. There, we will determine the value of our closing stock at the end of the financial year, and only then we will calculate our cost of sales. Um, before we go on, maybe I must just say a little bit more about that. Um, when we do our um, general ledger for those two, let me draw that here for you. So let's say this is the perpetual and the periodic. We've got different accounts that we use for these two. You will know that for perpetual, we've got a trading account. Oh, sorry, a trading stock account. And for periodic, we've got purchases. So whenever we purchase stock with perpetual, we will write in the trading stock account. But when we purchase stock for the periodic system, we will write in the purchases account. Then another thing that's very important difference here is when we have carriage on purchases with the perpetual that cost will be added in, in the trading stock account. But for periodic, we've got an account carriage on purchases. This is work that you, you will remember. You did this in grade 11. Okay. So I th I, this is basically the main two differences that, that we need to focus on. Okay. So let's go back to our um, PowerPoint. So in the perpetual system, everything with regards to stock happens in this account, in the trading stock account. So you will always, at the beginning of a month, you will have an opening balance. Then any purchases of stock will be added on the debit side. So that would be cash purchases in the CPJ or credit purchases of stock in your CJ. If sales takes place, this is also entered in the trading stock account. So there, um, on the credit side, now on the debit side, my trading stock will increase. On the credit side, my trading stock will decrease. So when will my trading stock decrease? When sales take place. And that's obviously at the cost price that we enter it there. Okay, and then we also, of course, have returns to creditors, which will um, reduce my stock. So that will be on the credit side or returns by debtors, which, which would once again increase my trading stock. So this happens every month, all of these transactions. And then at the end of the month, we will balance this account, and that will tell us what's the value 
of our stock at the end of the month. So here, perpetual, you first have to get cost of sales and only then you will be able to get the, the balance of your closing stock. Now, periodic is different. Let's look at that. The periodic system, you will start by using the, getting the opening stock then you will add all your purchases and of course after you've deducted returns if there was any then you will add carriage on purchases and then you will deduct the closing stock and only then you can calculate the cost of sales do you see the difference here you first get the value of your closing stock and then you get your cost of sales Remember, let's go quickly go back to perpetual. Here we first calculated cost of sales and then the value of our closing stock. With periodic, we first calculated closing stock and then the value of our cost of sales. But we get, we're going to get into to a lot more detail in a minute. Then you will see how this works. Okay, for stock valuations, We've got these two methods, first in, first out method, or we just say the FIFO method, where the assumption is made that stock purchased first will be sold first. Okay, that's the first in, first out method. The weighted average method is when an average price is calculated for the available stock. Now, usually we will use the, the FIFO method for, um, for stock with where we sell less quantities but of a, of a higher value, for instance, like furniture. With the weighted average method, we work most probably in, a, in like in a cafe. You will use that, where you sell lots of chocolates and um, you will calculate the average price of all the chocolates that you've sold. So ba that's basically how it works. Okay, so let's carry on. We are going to concentrate today only on the first in first out method on the 20th we're going to talk about the weighted average method okay so first in first out says that we make the assumption that stock purchased first will be sold first so let's say we buy 10 coffee mugs at a cost price of 10 rand each okay so there's our 10 coffee mugs and then okay that means the total cost of these 10 mugs was a hundred rand. Now let's say we purchase another 10 mugs, but this time the price of the mugs went up by five rand. So now the total cost is 150 rand. So how, man, how many mugs do I have in stock at this moment? I've got 10 plus 10, I've got 20 mugs in total. What is the total cost? of these um, 20 mugs that I have. The total cost is 250. Now remember, I've got the stock that I purchased first, the 10 Rand mugs, and then the 15 Rand mugs. Now let's say we sell 12 of these mugs. When we use the first in, first out method, which of those mugs will be sold first? We make the assumption that we're going to sell the mugs that we purchased first, we're going to sell them first. So that means those 10 mugs, they're going to go first, first, stock purchased first, okay? But how many did we sell? We sold 12. So and of the 15 Rand mugs, we're also going to sell two of those. Do you see? Okay, so that's, I think, a very good illustration to see how first in, first out works. So let's now say we need to calculate the cost of sales. We're using the perpetual system. We want to calculate the cost of sales. Then we're going to say the cost of sales is my, the 10 mugs costing 10 Rand each, plus two of the mugs costing 15 Rand each. So in total, 100 plus 30 gives me 130 Rand. That's the cost price of the mugs that I've sold. Okay, let's say we use the periodic system where we're not interested in the cost price of the mugs that we've sold, but we are interested in the cost price of the mugs that we didn't sell. Then we will say, okay, the mugs that we didn't sell would be the ones that we purchased last. So how many mugs do we still have? We still have 
8 marks. Remember, we had 20. We sold 12, so now we still have 8. What's the cost price of those 8 mugs? It is 8 times, they are all the stock purchase loss, so it's the 15 Rand mugs. So in other words, you can say 15 times um, 8, that will give you 120. Okay, let's look at another example. Yeah, we've got um, the unit price of our stock is 50 Rand each there, the opening stock. We've got 100 units to start with, so obviously the total cost was 5,000. Then we purchased um, some more stock, but this time the price went up. It was 50 rand, 51 rand. How many did we purchase? 20, at a total cost of 1020. Then we purchased another 30. The price went up with another rand, so now it was 52. Total cost 1560. And then we had sales. We sold 15 units. Then there was purchases again. Once again, the price went up. And then we had sales of 100. So let's now look at this example using the two FIFO methods. First, the FIFO perpetual and then the FIFO periodic. We're only going to look at those two today. Okay. On the next session, we're going to use the same example, but then we're going to use the weighted average method for today. First in, first out. So let's just see. First in, fir okay, what's required? You must calculate the cost of sales and the value of the closing stock for the perpetual inventory system using the FIFO method. So what does perpetual inventory system mean again? It means that we're going to calculate the cost of sales. What does FIFO mean again? It means stock purchased first will be sold first. Okay, so let's look at that. The best way for me to do this is using a trading stock account when we're using the perpetual system. Okay, perpetual is I like to do a trading stock account where I say my opening balance is 100 units times 50 is the price per unit, so that's 5,000. What happened then? We purchased some more, 20 units, so that would go on the debit side because my trading stock increased. Okay, and then we had purchases again, another 30 units, this time at a unit price of 52 Rand, so that's 1560. So that's what's on the debit side. Okay, now what happened then? Then we had sales. How many units did we sell? 15 units were sold. Okay, now remember what system we want to calculate the cost of sales, first of all, because we're using the perpetual system. How do we calculate the value of that stock that we've sold? We're using the FIFO method. So we're saying we are going to, 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 to use sell the stock first that we purchased first. So that would be those 15 of those units that we're selling. So what's the cost price of those units? It's 50 Rand per unit. So can I calculate my cost of sales? Yes, I can. Okay, I'm going to say my cost of sales is, let me just go there, 15 units times 50 Rand. That's my cost of sales, 750 Rand. And then I don't have 100 of those units anymore. I now only have 85. Okay. Then there was purchases again. So on what side do we write when we have purchases? Obviously on the debit side because trading stock will increase on the debit side. So there it goes. Okay. And then we had sales again. This time we sold 100 units. Now remember, first in, first out. So which units will I sell first? Those 85. That's my, the oldest stock I have is the 85 units at 50 Rand. But then that only makes 85. How many did I sell? I've sold 100. So that leaves me with another 15. So the next stock would be that 20 Rand, oh, that uh, 51 Rand stock. So I'm going to say it's that 85 plus 15 of those. So Let's calculate the cost of sales. So we say 
it's 85 of the 50 rand stock plus 15 of the 51 rand stock. Okay, that's how I calculate my cost of sales. So, let's just recap for perpetual. You calculate the value of your cost of sales. How do we do that? It depends. Which method of valuing stock are we using? FIFO. So we're saying the stock purchased first will be sold first. Okay, and now we can go on to balance this account. So let's see. I've, see, I've got a question here. How to balance the inventory account? We balance the inventory account by saying, by adding everything on the debit side. We do that. We will get 10330. Then we carry it over to the credit side. And now we deduct the cost of sales. So that's how much the, the trading stock increased minus the sales that we had. And our balance then, 4565, that then is the value of my stock at the end of the month. Okay. So this was FIFO Perpetual. Let's carry on to FIFO Periodic. Let's see what is different. It's still the FIFO method, so we still value our stock. We still say the f stock purchased first will be sold first. But now we will calculate the value of the closing stock. Can you remember with Perpetual we calculated the cost of sales. Now we're going to calculate the value of the um, closing stock. So let's go to our example again. It's the same example. You see exactly the same example. Um, let's see. Okay. So closing stock equals opening stock plus purchases minus cost of sales. So we can just as well say that cost of sales equals opening stock plus purchases minus closing stock. Now let's see which of these information do we have. Okay. So that's what we're going to use to calculate cost of sales. Do I have the value of my opening stock? Let's look at our example. Do we have the value, value of our opening stock? Yes, we do. There it is. Okay, it's that, 5,000 rand. So we do have the value of our opening stock, 5,000. Do I have my total purchases? Let's see. Purchases, every time it says purchases, there, I do have a value for that. See? Okay, let's go and do that. So it is where the stars are. 1020 plus the 1560 plus the 2750. Do I have the value of my closing stock? No, I don't. And this is now where the problem is. How am I going to calculate the value of my closing stock. First of all, I need to know what's the number of units in my closing stock. Okay, And then I need to know what is the price per unit. Okay, so is it, can we calculate the number of units? Let's first do that. Okay, the number of units and then the price per unit. Okay. So the number of units, we started off with 100. Okay, I see you want me to explain again the FIFO perpetual. I'm going to repeat this so many times. I promise you I will explain it again. Okay, so we started off with 100 units. That's, remember now, that's not the amount. That's the number of units. Okay, then how many units did we purchase? during the month. How many units did we purchase? Let's see, every time it says purchases, where the stars are. So it's 20 plus 30, that's 50, plus another 50. So it's 100 units that we purchased. So we had 100 units, and then we purchased another 100. Okay. How many did we sell? Let's see. We sold 15 and then 100. So in total, we've sold 150. So how many units do I have left now? I had 200 units to sell, of which I've sold 115. So 200 
minus 115, I'm left with 85 units. Now, the difficult part is, what's the price per unit? Okay, well, that depends. What does it depend upon? It depends on, am I using the FIFO method, or am I using the weighted average method? So, which one are we using? We're using the FIFO method. Okay, so what does the FIFO method say again? It says that the stock that we purchased first will be sold first. The stock that we purchased first will be sold first. Okay, so let's see. Um, the FIFO's closing stock, in other words, is the stock that we purchased last. Why is that? Because the old stock was sold first. So what are we left with? The closing stock is the stock that we purchased last. So let's see, how, can you remember how many units do we have left? We've got 85 units. Okay, we've got 85 units. There's a question, where did you get another 100 on purchase? Okay, there we had 100. And then we purchased, let's go back there, where the stars are, where the yellow stars are, we made purchases of an another 100. Okay, do you see that? And then we sold 115. Okay, I hope I answered your question there. So now we've got left 85 units. Okay. So we're using the FIFO method. So the stock, the closing stock, is now the stock that we purchased last. So how many units do we have? 85. Okay. What's the value of the stock that we purchased last? The f there's 50 units there. What's the value of those 50 units? It is 55 rand. You see. Okay. But that doesn't bring us to 85. That's only 50. See. So how many, is, how many do we still have? We still have 35. Okay, so let's go to the next one. It's that 30. That 30 units was purchased at a price of 52. So now we've got 50 plus 30, which brings us to 80. Do you see there's still another five units left? What's the price of that five units? It's from that stock. Okay, it's from that stock. Remember, that plus that is 120. How many of those did we sell? We sold 115. So of that 20, we only left with five. And the price of that five units is, there it is, 51. Okay. Can we now calculate the value of these 85 units? Yes, we can. Let's do that. So it is that 50, the stock that we purchased last, that 50, plus that 30, and then five of those. What happened to the other 150? We sold them. Okay. So let's calculate the value of our closing stock then. So now we just multiply these. We, see, we say 50 times 55 is 2750. 30 units times 52 is 1560. 1, and 5 units at 51 rand is 255. So the value of my closing stock is then these three added, which give me 4565. What would have happened if we didn't have opening stock? Then we just would have added all our purchases. That's the one question we have here. Uh, you mentioned something that the stock you purchase first must be sold first. What do you mean by that in FIFO? Okay. Um, we, we don't purchase all our stock at once. Okay. So we had the opening balance and then we purchased some more stock at different times. So the FIFO method means that the older stock, the, the, the stock that we had in our balance will be sold first and then the next ones and then the next ones. Okay, so in other words, when we calculate our closing stock, it will be the stock that we purchased last. I hope that makes sense to you. Okay, so let's go back um, to our example. So now, let's see. Can we now calculate cost of sales? Do we have our opening stock? Yes, that's our opening stock, the 5,000. Do we have our purchases? Remember the stars that we did? 
Yes, we do have that. Do I now have the value of my closing stock? Yes, we've just calculated that. Okay, and we've calculated that as 4565. So can I now calculate cost of sales? Yes, I can. That's a very clever question I have here. What about the returns? The returns, if we have returns, we will deduct the returns from our purchases. Okay, so that's a very clever question. So that's the next slide. Okay, so let's now go to our, um, the, the activities that you have in front of you. Okay, activity one. These um, activities are actually very nice. It's, uh, it's, it's exactly like the activities that you will get in the exam. So I just said here that this activity should take you more or less 15 minutes to do. Okay, but today we might take a little bit longer. If I can make a suggestion, when you write accounting, use a highlighter. It helps a lot. So then you can highlight to yourself. Let's first read. You are provided with information in respect of Best Rugby Ball Shop for the year ended 28 February 2012. Dates are very important. The business is owned by Ben Best. The business uses the perpetual inventory system and the FIFO method of valuing stock. Okay, so first of all, the perpetual inventory system, what does that mean? We will most likely calculate cost of sales. Even though in this question it's asked a little bit differently. What does FIFO mean? FIFO means stock purchased first will be sold first. Okay, that's what FIFO means. First in, first out. Okay, and that's the very first question as well says, explain the meaning of the term first in, first out. Okay, explain the meaning of FIFO. So that's very easy. First in, first out. So that's two marks in your pocket. Very easy. Okay, the next one. Question says, the selling price of rugby balls was kept constant throughout the year. Okay, it was kept constant. It didn't change. Calculate the selling price per rugby ball. Okay. So we first need to go and see in our question how many rugby balls, how many units were sold. Sales, it says 2,100 units were sold. Okay, how much did we get for that 2,100 units? We got 861,000 rand. So how will we calculate the selling price um, per unit? Let me just see, there's a question here. Do we have a perpetual system in the weighted average or does it focus only on the periodic system? Okay, let me quickly explain that to you. Um, you can basically say that you've got four different systems. Okay, you've got FIFO, periodic. You've got FIFO, perpetual. Then you've got weighted average. I'm just going to do that now. Periodic. And you've got weighted average perpetual. Okay. So there's four different ways to do this, to calculate cost of sales and to calculate the value of your closing stock. For today... We are only going to concentrate on these two, on the FIFO. And then on the 20th, we will look at weighted average. Okay, so let's carry on then. Okay, so how will we calculate the selling price per rugby ball? Let's see. We've got sales of 861,000 and the number of units is 2,100. So we will calculate that by saying... It's the total selling price of 861,000. How many units is that that we've sold? If you look in your question, just look there again. It is 2,100 units. So divided by 2,100 units, 
can quickly do that for me and see much how much do you get 861,000 divided by 2,100 that should give you 410 rand per unit that's the selling price okay let's look at the next question let's see if we've got any more questions here um, I think I've answered all of those uh, yeah okay let's carry on calculate the value no sorry 1.3 the owner Ben Best is aware that some of the balls were stolen from the storeroom in April once again dates are so important in April 2011 because this tells us what's the value of the stock that was sold it was in other words some of our opening stock see because the next purchases was only in May and the theft took place in April so but we'll get to that a little bit later okay now it says calculate the number not the amount the number of balls that are missing okay how are we going to do that let's see the number of units that went missing we first need to see how many units should there have been okay so we started off with 750 units how many did we purchase 2480 so in other words all in all how many units did we have to sell the 750 plus the 2480 that's how many units we had in our shop that we could could have sold. So 750 plus 2480. And then how many of those did we sell? We sold, we just said there, 2,100 units. Okay, so that was the opening stock, that was the purchases, and that was the number of units sold. Remember, I'm not working with amounts now. This is the number of units. So how many units should we have in our, in our shop? 750 plus 2480 minus 2100. Okay, that's how many units we should have. That should give you 1130. Let me just write that. 1130. That's how many units you should have. But the question says, closing stock at the end of the year is 1,100. Do you see? Closing stock is 1,100. So that means minus 1,100, it means 30 units missing. Okay. 30 units missing. Now, they ask, what double entry would you make in the books to record this? We can't just leave this. Okay, we need to apply the GAR principles and we need to write this in our books. Okay, so just for interest sake, what GAR principle will we be applying when we deduct this? Okay, it's a loss for this current financial year. So we can say that's the matching principle because it's stock that got lost during this financial year okay so which we know for a fact that the the account that will be credited is trading stock why is that so because trading stock will decrease and trading stock is an asset so it will decrease with a credit entry now the account that that will be debited will either be trading stock deficit which is a loss to the business or you could have made a special account like something like um, loss with asset disposal in in the end it will have the same effect on your profit and loss either one of these two okay so you could have debited trading stock deficit or you could have debited um, loss with asset disposal. In the end, it's going to be deducted from your net profit. But very important, you credit trading stock. Okay, so let's get, carry on. The next question says, uh, let's just first see. 
Um, do we have a pipette in the white, or does it only, okay, we answered that, sorry, we did all of those. Um, how many marks does the stock system have in the exams? <laughs> okay, it should be more or less, uh, um, it could be anything between 15 and 30 marks, I would say, so, and it's easy marks. So it's really worth your while to know how to do this. Okay, 1.4, let's carry on. Um, calculate the value of closing of value of stock on hand at the year end according to the FIFO method. Let's see, what are they asking us? The value of the closing stock at the year end. Okay, so how will we do that? Remember, we are using the FIFO method. So what do you know by now about the FIFO method? That we will sell, the stock that we purchased first will be sold first. And the closing stock, in other words, will be the stock that we purchased last. So let's see. They tell us the closing stock is a 1,100 units. That's how much stock there is at the end of the year. So that 1,100 units. Let's see. What was the value of the stock that was purchased last? It was the stock that was purchased there in December. And it was 480 units. And the price of that 480 units was 320 each. So we're going to say, okay, that's 480 at a price of 320. So if I say 480 times 320, that will give me 153,600. Okay. But that doesn't bring me to 1,100 yet. Okay, so let's see. What's the difference? 1,100 minus 480. Um, that means we still have 620 units. Okay. So the value of the six, 620 units will then be, let's see, that's the 480. The 620 will then be the, the units that we purchased second last. See? So what was that? That was at 240. That's the value per unit. So 240. Okay, so now you have to calculate that. You have to say... 620 times 240, and that will give you 148,800. So can we now calculate the value of our closing stock? Yes, by adding those two. Okay, if you add those two, you will get 302,400. So let's just recap quickly. Um... The stock, how many units do we have left at the end of the year? We have 1,100 units. Because we're using the FIFO method, we're using the FIFO method, therefore we will say it's the stock that was purchased, last that we still have um, at hand, because we sold the stock that we purchased first, we would have sold that first. First in, first out. Okay, so... The units that we still have is the stock that we purchased last. 480 units times 320. And then that leaves us with another 620 units. Because how many do we have left? 1,100. So another 620 of the stock that we purchased second last, which was at 240 per unit. And then we calculate the value of our closing stock. Now you should know that... When you use um, the perpetual, you, the best way to do it is actually to do a trading stock account, but you can, there's different ways of doing it. I like to do it in a trading stock account. So I will say, what was my opening balance of my trading stock? Let's go back to our question. The opening balance of our trading stock was 165000 Okay, 165,000. What was our purchases? Our purchases will be added there. 
on the debit side because that will increase the value of my trading stock. So what was our purchases for the year? Let's look at our question. Our purchases, that was the opening stock. Our total purchases, now they've added everything here in this block, is 681,600. Okay, so let's add that. 681,600. Okay. Now, then, remember, some of the goods were stolen. So you can either write this in as trading stock deficit, goods stolen, loss with stolen goods, whatever you prefer. You will write that in there, but now how do we calculate that value? Can you remember what we said? It's the the the, the those um, units were stolen in or got lost during April. So that would mean that it's the stock with a unit price of two hundred and twenty. Okay, so that means two hundred and twenty rand times how many units times 30 units okay and that will give us 6600 units that were stolen okay so now we have the opening balance plus the purchases minus the units that units that were stolen okay what do, what do we want to calculate we want to calculate the cost of sales okay now, if you think back of what does the trading stock account look like, we will then have cost of sales there on the credit side because it decreases the trading stock. But now we don't have that. Okay, we're going to work back to that. What do we have, however? We do have the closing balance. Remember? We just calculated that in the previous question. Let's go back there. What did we calculate? The value of the stock at the end of the year. 302,400. So now I can write that in there. 302,400. Okay. 302,400. So now I can say, okay, the value of my closing stock will be, I add everything on the debit side, I deduct everything on the credit side, and then you will get 537,600. Okay. Okay. The next question is also very important. They will always ask you something with regards to stock, something like this. So let's see what happened here. Um, oh, wait. We didn't finish this one quite yet. We still need to calculate the gross profit as well. Okay. How do we get the gross profit? We get that by saying sales minus cost of sales. So, do we have the sales amount? Yes, they gave that to you. 861,000 minus the cost of sales. We just calculated that. 537,600. So, my profit will then be 860,000 minus 537,600. And that should give you three, two, three, four hundred. Okay. The next question, and this is just something that you have to practice. Ben is not sure when to place his next order of rugby balls. How long can he expect the closing stock to last? Provide figures um, to support your answer. And what advice would you give him? Um, I give two points. Okay. If we go to our PowerPoint, the number of months stock on hand, to calculate that, you will usually use average stock. But now, in this case, we want to use the closing stock. So, let's go back. What is our, the value of our closing stock? Remember, we purchased, the, uh, we calculated that in number 1.4. So, the value of our closing stock is 302,400. So that will go there. And then we calculated our cost of sales um, as 537,600. Let's say we want our answer in days. You would then say times 365 over, over 1. Let's say we want our answer in months. Then we say times 12 over 1. So if we do that calculation, you should get 
6,8 months. Now that's quite, quite a lot, okay? So in other words, they have got stock on hand of 6,8 months. Okay, now he says, what advice would you if offer, Ben, in respect of this information that you've now calculated? Now, I, I always tell my learners, the best, when you want to give advice, you must first look at what's the risk involved, and then you can give advice. Okay, so let's see. If he has stock of 6,8 months, what's the first risk that you can think of? Okay, I would say that could have an influence on your cash flow. Okay, so what advice would you give him so that it doesn't have such a big influence on his cash flow? He's, he's going to have a cash flow problem if he's got so, so, such a lot of stock on hand. Okay, we can say our advice would be to purchase um, smaller quantities, for instance. Smaller quantities. Okay, I hope you agree with that. What's another risk that you can think of? Um, let's say if you've got such a lot of stock on hand, stock could become, stock become obsolete. In other words, it's outdated. People don't want that kind of stock anymore. So how, how can you get rid of that stock that's old? You could have discounts. So let's say offer discounts on older stock. Then you can get rid of that. Okay. What's another risk that you can think of? Um, there could be a security risk. 30 units got lost or stolen, so there's definitely a security risk. What advice could you give him to improve on that? Okay, first of all, stock must be insured. That's, that's definitely something that he should look into. Or um, access to the storage room um, could be in, in, uh, limited. Access limited. Okay, we can say that. Another one maybe. Storage space. If you had, have such a lot of stock, storage space could be a problem. So how can he, what advice would you give him to, to better that situation? Okay, we can say um, only order minimum stock, or you can say only order stock when the stock levels are low. So that he doesn't have such a lot of stock on hand. 6,8 months, that's quite a lot. Okay, so that's how I would answer this question. I would first look at the risk, and then I would give some advice on, 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 on how to, to not have that, that risk. Okay, so that was this question, just once again, was for perpetual FIFA. Now the next question that that you that that you you have there is let's see FIFA periodic okay FIFA periodic and that you now have to go and do so let's see at some questions um, ooh, there's a lot of questions that I missed um, will the examiner always ask me to first calculate cost of sales and then gross profit? Yes, most likely. They will usually lead you in your answer that you first calculate the closing stock um, and then the cost of sales or they will ask you to calculate the cost of sales and then um, yeah, the closing stock and then the, the gross profit. So the, most of the questions will lead you um, the one to the next. Okay, let's quickly look at this um, question here that you, that you have to do for homework, please. It says, the FIFO method using the periodic inventory system. So what's different here? It's still FIFO, but this time periodic. Okay, so let me just show you something. When you use the periodic inventory system, you must always do this, where you say, to calculate cost of sales, I'm going to say opening stock 
plus purchases minus closing stock. Okay, but once again in this question you would have seen 2.3 first ask you to calculate the value of your closing stock. So 2.3 leads you to this answer here and that helps quite a lot. Okay. Um, okay, let's let's quickly look at this. The value of your closing stock. Just so that you so to help you a little bit when you go and do this for homework. Okay, remember it's first in first out. So the closing stock here is 235. So remember what we said, it will be the stock purchased last. So the stock purchased last was 180 units at 4,200. So it's 180 units at 4,200. And then how many units do you still have left? So you say 235 minus 180 and then you will find you still have 55 units left okay so at what value would that be at the stock that you purchased second last so let's look at that the stock that we purchased second last was at 4500 okay so now we can calculate that that would then be sorry i'm going very fast now to so that we can, because next week we have to do weighted average, okay. And that amount is then the amount that you can write in there. 1003500, I hope you can read that. Okay, and now we just need to complete the rest. Where we say, sales was given to us, 3037500. Do we have our opening stock? Yes, we do. Opening stock. For question two was 240,000. Our purchases was, whew, maybe I must just rewrite this quickly. Okay, so sales 3037500. Okay, and then cost of sales we will now calculate how by saying opening stock 240,000. Purchases is two five eight three five hundred minus closing stock. We just calculated that in the previous one. Okay, now we do that. We calculate cost of sales, it's one eight two oh thousand, and we can calculate our gross profit. And that is then one two one seven five hundred. I'm sorry, I know that was very fast, but this you must go and do it at, at, on your own at home because next week we are then going to do um, the weighted average method. So I, I will see you again on the twentieth. Go and do these activities at home again. I promise you, it's amazing the difference it will make for you to understand this better. If you now go home tonight. And, and you go and do that again. Okay, and then I will see you again on the 20th and then we will talk about weighted average and we'll also look at some, some ratios with regards to, to inventory. Okay, I hope this helped you a lot. I will see you again on the 20th. Thank you.